Welcome to this tutorial on plotting with Python. I will use here one of the Jupyter notebooks from the course repository, which is the v 7 pyplotipynb At this time, I will assume that you are familiar with NumPy and Pandas and that you have a basic idea of functions and how to run your Python. I will walk you through three options for plotting with Python. One is the most fundamental baseline here in the form of the matplotlib. The second one is plotting with pandas. And the third one is plotting with plotly for interactive plots. Before we really dive into matplotlib, let's have just look at how you would import it. So you would import matplotlib uh, dot pyplot typically as plot, uh, uh, sorry, as plt. The matplotlib was uh, initiated here in near bi biology, so its the original author, author passed uh, sadly uh, away, and he intended to um, emulate here that uh, MATLAB software, and he did a very good job and went, in my opinion, beyond that. So with uh, matplotlib.pyplot imp uh, as imported as in PLT, we have um, the basic tool to work with plots in Python. Now, for working or designing a plot, we need to get from the abstract code image to something that you can visualize. And for that purpose, it is important to recall or to uh, memorize now what are the items of a plot and how you can then um, access them in your code. So everything that surrounds here your plot is the figure. This grayish area here are the access. The access embrace then everything here that is embrace uh, that contains the axis. So we have an x axis and then y y-axis for instance and these axes have y ticks so these are these red elements or x tags x ticks here you can plot the line so the blue thing here and the line might have markers these markers can have different shapes the line can be described here in a legend and you can also give the plot a title here within the axis Similarly, you can also then give titles or labels here to the y-axis and the x-axis. To confine your plot, you can use limits here in terms of y-limit and y-lim uh, or of y-max. Same works here with x-min and x-max. The grayish lines here that you see in the background are what represents a grid. And also for the grid, you can then specify different graphical properties. To create now a plot that defines these elements of a figure, I wrote down this step-by-step -step recipe that works with 1D or 2D line plots. So the recipe, of course, involves first to import a matplotlib.pyplot um, as plt. Then I will create figure, then I will access to the figure, then I will create a color map um, that generates an array of colors that is similar a little bit to what um, I've shown you in the NumPy section with these minimum maxim maximum values for the red, green, and blue channels. Then to plot data with lines, I can use then here access.plot uh, with a line style, um, put here some string type then I am um, you can also alternatively plot here as points um, in that case you probably want to use axis dot scatter I added for both line plots and um, scatter plots here the direct links to the map.lib docs to get uh, to enable you getting a little bit more definitions and more options here um, some more optional keyword arguments that you can provide to tweak or adapt your plot as you want it 
Um, to manipulate now the ticks, you can use then plt.xtex and ytix to de uh, that basically defines then um, uh, with lists the red dots here where they should appear in your plot. Then you can use the set xlim, ylim with uh, a tuple of minimum and maximum values for the x axis and the y axis. And you can define labels with uh, axis.setx label and set y label. For adding a legend, you can use, uh, you can refer here to the uh, access, so with um, x, uh, e, uh, that is important. Um, the location will define where the legend is going to be. Is it at the bottom left, uh, left, top right, or wherever? Face color is probably where you want to have something like uh, white if you're writing on white paper, or um, then the X color is probably black. You can also use a frame alpha. Um, the alpha channel is typically something that defines um, an opacity. So if uh, yeah, um, your channel, your a frame should be opaque or not. Um, my recipe here optionally involves a um, save figure command um, that takes a file name as a string and then the dots per inch, so the quality that you need for printing your plot. If you're writing a technical report, you probably want to make sure um, that you probably want to make sure that your dots per inches are something like uh, 220. If you're going for scientific publications, you would rather use 600 here. I implemented this recipe here in a uh, function that you can also just uh, download directly here by clicking on it. I just opened it now in a new uh, tab here. So what I defined here is a plotter class with many more options. Um, we didn't get yet to classes, um, but that's basically what you can use to create a figure, to create heat maps, um, and so on. A little bit simpler here is this following code block that um, defines a plot x y function. And I'm plotting here just a random y ball. Uh, distribution with a shape factor a equals 1 and the seed argument that describes the source of randomness, but I'm using the seed now. What my function uses is a plot type that by default I assigned a 1D line. Um, the label here is what I gave, um, uh, with, uh, what I defined it with a random, sorry, with a default value of random variable. And the save argument, I um, by default assign it a none. Um, just recall the functions tutorial. I cannot leave the uh, save argument here without a default value when I define default the values to arguments before that save argument. Okay, now to get here to my um, uh, function or to my plot here, what I want here is. Um, to define first an x axis, then I want to create here the uh, y ball distribution, and I'm using for that here uh, numpy random um, dot random state, and I'm using here its y ball uh, function to create these uh, to create the y yeah, to create the y ball distribution. In the import here, you still see one additional feature that is CM like color map for uh, facilitating the color mapping. Then this plot function here basically walks through the whole workflow or a cooking recipe from above. The, the only thing is here that I'm defining all the dots per inches here before I'm getting to the uh, to the save figure functions and just define here by default an edge color and so on. If you want to flexibilize that, you will need to add this here as function arguments, or you can change it hard coded in the function. All the rest is now just applying the um, and the cooking recipe here to code, adding it to a function. 
So while now I defined you my x and y values before, I cannot call a function before I defined it, so that's why I can only call it here below, now with the plot x, y and the arguments x and y. And this is how I would get the lines. Now, if I want it to be a scatter plot, I will need to change the plot type to scatter. That would make the function to jump from, instead of that block here, to this scatter plot here. I can then also change the label and assign the label a random variable scattered. And that's going to be uh, the result um, if I had defined NumPy now. So happy little mistake because I guess that's going to um, happen to uh, some of you also. If I want to use NumPy and I don't have it in my default uh, imports, I will need to import it explicitly here. And then it works that I get here my line plot and my scatter plot with the color maps that I defined before. Beyond scatter plots and line plots, surface and contour plots are a very powerful tool, in particular if we think about the spatial variability of hydrodynamic parameters. Matplotlib provides many options for plotting such data, and I listed multiple options here. Um, for instance, here with the plot surface, plot contour, plot contour f, and so on. Um, these functions here basically all need the same input in terms of an x and a y uh, coordinates and then z values that should be plotted. If you click on these links, they will directly forward you to the matplotlib docs where you can see examples and more specifications about how you can modify or tweak the plot for your purposes. One particular plot type here is the stream plot. The stream plot enables you to show u and v uh, velocity vectors. So that's what I'm doing here in this uh, following example, where I am supposing that I have u and v velocity vectors that might stem from a numerical model. In this case here, I'm creating it somehow artificially um, by defining here a numpy grid um, with uh, the number 100. You can just play with it, modify it to 1050 and so on. Then I'm calculating here u and v velocity matrices on this uh, NumPy uh, grid. I'm creating then a figure with a certain figure size in inches here. Uh, I'm assigning quality, plot, plot quality here with the dots per inches equals to 200. Now I'm adding here a figure grid. So attention that figure grid here is not the same as um, the grid where I'm plotting on, um, but I'm adding here one row with two columns. That means I can add then two subplots to that figure. Now here I'm calculating now the absolute velocity vectors. So the square root of u to the power of 2 and v to the power of 2. Here I'm adding now the first subplot to the figure at the position 0, 0. So that is again that uh, Python nomenclature of counting elements. Um, the second plot, um, plot then here will be in column number um, 2, uh, that is then at position 1. Huh? So that's going to be here, that one. Anyways, so the first here is my stream plot where I'm using the x and the y coordinates, so the ones that I calculated here. Then the u and v uh, vector matrices that I calculated here for the velocity, just as an example using here just a density, color B means black, and here that here just defines the line width. What I'm doing here in that plot is I'm using a kind of line width variation, and that variation is the result here of dividing the velocity that I calculated, so that's here the, uh, the, the uh, um, resulting velocity by the maximum velocity, and I just infer here with the dot max command, because the NumPy array can do that. For the title, then you have options like assigning a font size and type, a font size, a font weight, and so on. Then my second subplot here that I'm putting here now in the column one um, 
is basically the, using the same data, but now the difference is instead of varying the line width, I am varying now the color as a function of the velocity, and I'm telling it here to use a color map uh, in the sense of blues. So use different blues to uh, uh, color my plots. If I run that command, it takes a couple of seconds, and I get here the line width variations and here the color maps as a function of my velocities. So now you know how to create a simple line plot, scatter plot, a surface plot, or even a 3D plot also works with the um, commands that I've just presented above. If you want to go a little bit further in fonts and styles to adapt to a specific reporting type or um, other template structures that you need to follow, then there are specific options in matplotlib. Um, through its font manager. So from the matplotlib font manager, you can import the font uh, properties and you can import here the RC um, definitions. And that enables you then here to infer uh, or to instantiate a font objects. So these are the font properties. Now you can set here family, which is sans serif, times new roman, italy, single ball, whatever you want here. Um, just play a little bit around if you want. Um, but if you have that here, um, defined you need to convert that to a dictionary in order to apply it to a plot. So to translate your font properties into a dictionary, I'm using here uh, another for loop. If the contents of these for loops now look a little bit fuzzy to you, I invite you to have a look again at the tutorial on loops. Now to apply the font properties to the script, I'm using now the RC module that I just imported here, and I am in, um, oh, I should better say RC function, and I'm applying here uh, the font, uh, to the font, I'm applying now here my font dic, so dictionary. Now let's test how that translates into a plot. Here I am now using NumPy's linspace function. I just create some uh, y oscillations here with a cosine function um, as a function of the uh, x uh, of these linear distances between uh, the x values. And now I'm plotting them here just with, uh, uh, with the uh, plot.subplots function. Um, I'm providing as x data the x len data, as y data the y oscillations label. Oscillations make sense somehow. Hmm. Um, then the x label is going to be the time if it's my oscillations, and the y label is going to be the oscillations. So if uh, I run that now, that's the result. Your uh, system may uh, throw some errors depending on what. Uh, um, operation system you're running on if these fonts are defined. So I tried here to find uh, a normal uh, font family that it does not exist here on my Windows. There are some more options here uh, to define font characteristics and if you want to see those um, you can do that by looking here at the RC params. So you can import here from uh, matplotlib directly the RC params, and then you can see what, uh, what fonts you have actually available here and that you can use without getting uh, such error messages like I had it uh, before. So here I just changed then a little bit um, the uh, RC parameters and I redid a, a plot here with this uh, with these changes and uh, this is basically how that looks like now if you want to play with that so you see obviously i did already play with that here to get to that result um, i invite you here to uh, stop the video and adapt the parameters here um, that for example for the rc params um, or the styles that you want to apply to your plot so in particular here, 
the style to use. Let's assume you have a plot where you want to point at a particular item, a particular shape in the curve, a particular point that represents a specific value. Then you may want to use annotations. You can also add these annotations here with matplotlib. Again, I'm showing you here one um, option to add annotations. Um, you do actually not need all the uh, all the styles here. I'm just um, uh, visualizing here another style to use, which is 538, uh, just from the last uh, subsection. I'm creating here, uh, instantiating a figure and axis again. Then I'm adding here uh, a super title of the figure. I'm adding a title of the figure. And now I put some text here. So that is now the annotation uh, text. So what you see here is the B box italic text with axis coordinates 1, um, comma, 0, 8. So it is here at uh, x axis 0, 1, huh? and the 0, 8 refers to that value. So it puts the plot here at that point. Um, you define it here with these coordinate positions. So that's 1 and 0, 8. The font size and the font styles you can define with that here. And the B box is what defines now um, the color scale. Um, I'm added, I added here also an alpha channel, meaning some uh, less, it's not 100% opaque here, um, and a padding, so pad around um, that B box. The other annotation text that you see here is at 506, huh? so it always starts here, um, where I put here an equation, so maybe you want to show an equation in your plot. Um, if you just want to put some colored text here, I just put it here on another position. But what I wrote here, I used the horizontal alignment and the uh, uh, vertical alignment uh, commands um, in addition here to, uh, uh, to the style commands. So now here I made the plot, then I annotated also uh, um, th that uh, plotted point here. So my plotted point here is x. Very easy here. It's, uh, if you want, a uh, line plot without line because there's only just one point at 0 0.5 and 0 0.2 uh, that has the marker size 7, marker uh, blue, and has the format of an X. So that's why it looks like this. Now the annotation uh, arrow here, arrow here points at the X, Y coordinate 0 0.5, 0 0.2, so where my point is, and then the text is placed at the position 2 and 0 0.4. Can again change your uh, face color or use that shrink command here to modify a little bit the size of that annotation. Then the axis and axis here is something that you have already seen. If you have a specific style template now that you want to use, I invite you to tackle this challenge here where you can develop a wrapper function, so recall here the functions tutorial, to decorate your own plot xy function in um, functions for matplotlib. We exemplify the, uh, uh, the plotting functions in the exercises on reservoir design and flat return period calculation if you want to have a look at those and learn more details here. I already mentioned in the pandas tutorial that you can also directly tweak into matplotlib with or through pandas. And here's now how that works. So from a pandas data frame, you can use its dot plot function that needs then the x argument of the first column and the second column that you want to plot. 
For this purpose here, I invite you to download here my example FlowGate um, workbook that uh, you can get here. So either you save that link as um, a file or a workbook then in the data subfolder or you're directly using already here um, the course repository where the example flow gauge uh, workbook already lives. Then in that uh, example flow gauge data sheet, you're going to find a workbook, you're going to find one sheet that is called mean monthly cubic meters per second. Um, so let's run that to see the head of those. Again, I didn't define pandas yet, so I need to import um, pandas first here. run the code again and then I get here um, the head of that file where I see here the date so that's the year month and uh, day and then I get here the uh, discharge of flow in cubic meters per second what I did then here I used now the dot plot function where I used the date as so the date column here as x data and the um, discharge of flow in cubic meters per second uh, for y data. Then I defined the kind, so what uh, type of plot do I want as a line. And that is what produced here that uh, plot of discharges of flow between something like 1997 through 2000 and what is it, 17. You can basically also combine then your pandas and matplot uh, directly with matplotlib because it is inherently um, linked to each other. So for example now, if we have now our pandas data here, so we can read another um, sheet here from that uh, workbook. That sheet is now the flow duration, so the flow duration curve. Um, then let's import matplotlib if that's not yet the case. Define axis again. Now we're going to plot here the, um, we're going to use the plot function from the pandas data uh, frame and we're going to use different options here of uh, axis and um, items that we all would get then from the matplotlib. Importing here matplotlib in that um, particular case is only necessary here to, in, to create uh, the figure and then to put or place the plot, in, plot here into uh, the figure. What is then important here is that I'm assigning here um, the axis, so 0 and 1 positions, um, as the subplot position where I want it to be in my plot. So let's run that uh, little example. You see here 1 is here uh, the blue, dark blue area plot and the other one is the uh, scatter plot or the flow exceedance or flow duration curve here. If you're looking at any measurement data or experimental data, then it is always important to know what is the error or what is the statistical distribution of what you get. In that case, error bars or box plots can be very helpful. So if you want to read more about box plots, I added here a little link uh, to Wikipedia um, that describes uh, the backgrounds behind uh, box plots. Basically what a box plot contains is boxes of the main body of the data, medians that are horizontal lines indicating the median of every box, Whiskers, which are vertical lines that extend from the uh, to the most extreme non-outlier data points. Then there are uh, caps, um, that are small horizontal lines and the endings of the whiskers. And then there are flyers, which are the outlier points that are then beyond the whiskers. Then there are also means that are the points of the data set means. So these are uh, also marked in the box plot. I will illustrate now here a box plot of uh, flow depth or water depth measurement 
um, you can either download that here by right clicking on that link and save link as or if you clone the course repository it's already here in the data sub folder you will find here flowdep.csv 009.csv so to read that csv file we're going to use here um, and pandas uh, read csv function we will use um, an one kind here that is the index column so if you want to have a look here at that data set it's maybe nice to know here that the first or the column uh, row number zero here is um, what defines the uh, the sensors and the column number zero defines the time To, ex, uh, to show that, or to show just that important part here of that uh, um, CSV file, I'm using here again that uh, uh, data frame.head function for the first two rows. Then I'm creating here a subplot with matplotlib functions again. I'm defining a font size, so I'm variabilizing that a little bit if you want to change that later on. Then I am creating here. Um, um, and property dictionaries for these uh, for my plots. So I make diamond flyers with a marker face color that I call thistle and marker D and so on. Um, if you uh, want to play with that, I warmly invite you to do so to optimize your box plot for whatever you want. So all these here are basically just um, graphical optimizations or adaptations according to personal taste uh, or project needs that you um, need uh, that you want to adapt then the uh, now essential part here is where we are getting first to uh, renaming of the, the plots so just for conciseness I'm using here the labels s1 s2 and s3 and s5 instead of sensor 1 2 3 and so and 5 so we skip here sensor number four hmm? then i'm creating here a box plot here directly now from the data frame i'm using the font size and divisions here i'm adding it at axis zero so i uh, created again uh, two uh, positions at the uh, axis then i'm defining the flyer props as a function of my diamond flyers cap props um, median props box props or whisker props. Huh? Um, that second command here then adds another plot at the axis position one. Mm -hmm. Now I'm using color tomato. I'm using here a horizontal box plot uh, now and I'm applying now here the square flyers, um, the font size that I defined above. Um, I'm uh, enabling the mean line. I'm saying it show the means. Um, and I'm applying the adapted labels again. So if I run that, I will get these box plots. One is vertically aligned, um, the other one is um, horizontally aligned. So now you have seen how to create a box plot. But before I was also talking about error bars. So error bars are those things that indicate how certain you are about your measurement or your device um, uh, uh, measurement device precision. In this example here, I'm uh, showing you how you can create these error bars with um, again uh, a pandas data frame, uh, where I'm first again creating here a, a figure with a, uh, with an axis that has again two columns with a matplotlib. Then I am calculating the means here of my uh, sensors and the errors as a uh, value defined as the standard deviation of my sensors. I can do that here in this case because I assume that the discharge was basically constant. So the sensors should, should have some constant value measurements and every variation then. So the standard deviation is the error. It's discussable this approach, but it's one option. And this is how these error bars happened. So what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm plotting now, uh, I'm using here bar plot, one vertical and one horizontal bar plot. And I am adding to this bar plot here, these uh, little uh, uh, error bars. 
So as arrows here, so in this case here in the first one, I need to add y arrows because the arrows should be plotted in the y-axis, along the y-axis. I'm using here uh, the calculated arrows here as a standard deviation. Huh? And the same basically for the horizontal plot, just that here it is the x arrows. You can also do something similar for uh, scatter plots, but I will not dive now here into, into the details. But if you need to, to identify the errors in your data set and the calculation, or need to calculate errors in your data, um, I invite you to have a look here at, the, uh, at how you calculate the propagation of errors in your data. Finally, there is the hint that there are many more options for plotting with pandas and combining it uh, with MATLAB. In another tutorial, I will talk then about interactive plots uh, with Plotly. And at this time, I say thank you again for watching this tutorial on plotting with Matplotlib and pandas.